welcome to another episode of Stuff Show. I'm your host, Stephanie Stone. Thank you for tuning in. I'm out here on location in Elmhurst, Illinois, in Comcast, on location with Vince Locasio, my guest today. Hey, Vince. Hey. hey thanks how are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for uh, letting me come here and interview you. Well, I'm a busy guy, so yeah. fitting this into my schedule is yes. difficult, but yes. that's okay. Yes. Vince is the host, <laughs> producer and host of the Busy Guy Show, and today you're not only going to be my host, my guest, but my guest host, which I'm really excited. Nice. Thanks for having me. Yeah, cool. It's so, interesting to be on the other side of the uh, coin. So yeah. Speak. Yeah, it's neat. It's, it's always a little bit different to interview somebody who does interviews, and I'm going to try to keep up with like what you do. How long have you been doing the show? And tell people about it. Well, it's almost uh, four years now, and what it is, it's uh, Comcast is very kind and generous to give me the opportunity to mm -hmm. do public access. Um, but a big shout out to the crew, the guys that helped me yeah. do it, because it's all volunteer. It is. That's right. They you have a nice crew. Time. Yeah, we do. Yeah, and part of part of Vince's crew helped on this shoot, and the lighting's really good. And anyways, maybe you can tell. And uh, how many people work on your show, and what got you started doing the show, and tell us about it. Well, the people that work on the show, all um, the first stipulation, they become certified by Comcast. Yes. Uh, to, yes. to operate the cameras, the sound, you know, lighting, and all that. And uh, there's about uh, yeah. six or seven, but there's you know a good staple of people that help out. Yeah, it's nice. And I think I should give them, you know, yeah. say their names out loud. Go ahead, because I think it's great camaraderie. It's wonderful working with people. Isn't it? You it know, is. I mean, they, it it's is. all about their time. They're giving up the time for, away from their families and what they do. But so. you know, I know people don't give up time unless it's really fun. Because when I used to do cable access years ago at Skokie, which Skokie is now closed, uh, it was just tremendous fun. It was a kind of experience you couldn't get anywhere else, whether you got paid or not. And unfortunately, that ended a long time ago, long before the studio closed, because there used to be a, a lot of people that were involved. And it was almost like a party. It was creative. I call it the golden age, <laughs> at least in Skokie back in the 90s. So I don't know if it's like that for you now, but go ahead and name well, everybody who I'll say, I'll try to say, uh, I've got Mark Radaba, Tony O, Tony O, who stayed here today to help, Thank Mike, Mike Ritt, um, <laughs> Ed Mueller, Lee, and Jeremy that are with Comcast. Um, Rick Opperman, Ray Pysik, Al Stash has helped in the past, uh, Rachel Radabaugh, and I hope I'm not leaving anybody out, I'm sure I am, but all these people have always helped me out. Yeah. You know, I think something that uh, yeah. we should talk about how, you know, Skokie closed, but I think a yeah. big part of uh, what's going on here, and you know as well as I do, that it used to be, 20 years ago, if I told you we had a TV show, you'd be like, wow, well, yeah. people can make a TV show on their phones now. You know, and broadcast. Right, it's amazing. There was a, a documentary that won Best Documentary Academy Award, and part of it was taped on his iPhone. It was a documentary about a, uh, a singer in South. That's very popular in South Africa, and I forgot the name of the movie. But um, we're taping. It's August 2014. By the way, can I just take this opportunity right now to also say that coming up later in the show, I'm going to show a 1970s summer shirt. It's like a little retro thing, and I think you'll find it fun. I have one of those in my car. But. Yeah, okay, it's cool. <laughs> he looks, you look great in the midriff, by the way, with you know the whole thing showing. Show off your tattoos and everything, yeah. and your piercings and whatever. So go on. You were talking about. Oh, where were we? Yeah. Well, we were about talking... the crew and about how people can can uh, you know make shows just on their phones right now. Yeah. But this is a very professional atmosphere. The it lighting, is. the sound, and all that. You know, and uh, it's yeah. nice. Maybe you out there watching have made a show, or if you like to. Do cable access? Come on down, right? Yeah, but it's in Elmhurst. Right, we're in Elmhurst right now. Mount Prospect, I guess, is another location where you can get certified. I've been told that cable yeah. access is like showing home movies in your closet. Mm. But I think it's. I think you got to get, get the word out. That's all. Yeah, you got to get the word out. My opinion. I watch a lot of YouTube videos, and I think that the the content of cable access is different than the content of YouTube videos. Which you, the most popular YouTube videos I've seen are really short, and they're kind of like. Like, why, why are people watching this? <laughs> yeah. And then they go viral. Yeah, it's really neat. It's like kind of like really quirky. Well, I guess Cable Access is quirky. Anyway, I'd like so. my show to go viral. Yeah, hey. I think there's talk, two people that watch it now. Talk, talk about your show. It's called It's a Busy, You're a Busy Guy. Well, I'm a busy guy. Everybody's busy, but productive yeah. is good. Anyways, uh, what I've done, I've taken subjects that I like, and that's the beauty of it. Whatever I like, I can do, you know, if I want to stand my head and swallow golf balls, I can do that. I, I haven't tried that yet, but I like the Beatles, so I had American English on. I had, you know, I like oh, yeah. Schwinn Stingrays, the old uh, bikes. I had guys that were collectors of those on. 
tonight I had a guy, uh, Michael Dorfman, that Michael Dorfman owns a drum company and he manufactures drums now. Cool. You know. So you like drums? Yeah, I do. I like yeah. music. Do you play drums? I do. Have you ever played on your show? I haven't. I played the guitar quite a bit though on the show. And do you write music? Or do you play by ear? Do you? No, I cover. You know what they say? I play Covers. other people's music. Okay. But I like, like I said, I like the Beatles, I like the old rock and roll stuff. And also on your show, you walk off at the end. Because I'm a busy guy. guy. And it's very rude, but. You're very rude, but why you say rude? That's not rude. Yeah, well, I thought you're known for being rude. Are you gonna walk off my uh, your show? <laughs> I'm gonna do it right now. No, no maybe don't later. Do that. What am I gonna talk about? I don't know. Hey, what do you care? <laughs> I have one guy that was on the show <laughs> that told me after the fact that was rude. He said that that was really rude what you did to me. I was like, it's my shtick. Yeah, that's your and then thing. Then he finally got over it. But <laughs> did you know. decide ahead of time before you did the show? Um, I guess in 2010 is when you started your show. About yeah. Is that how you decide? Did you decide before you started the show that you were going to be like rude and that was going to be your shtick? No, I don't know how that one came to me. But you know, okay. you sit there and think of ideas. I got a million ideas that I haven't even put to use yet that I want to do on the show. But I, what really? I'd like to do, yeah. and I'll eventually do, is I'll take. Uh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel's job, Jimmy Fallon. I'm gonna take all your jobs. Watch. Yeah, just watch. I think Jimmy Fallon's really talented. I, yes. I, I don't. I actually I watch him on YouTube, and I haven't. I don't have a TV. <laughs> um, You're lucky but, you. So there you go. You're not but I know I'm missing cable access. Oh my god. You're gosh. missing the busy guy though, but you can see that on YouTube too. Yeah, YouTube. Oh my gosh, there's such talent. Um, both professional people who are on TV and non-professionals. There's some really talented people out there. Um, well, speaking of talented. As we're taping August 2014, Robin Williams recently died. Yeah. And uh, we want to talk about that. That, um, well, if anything, you know, I mean, I'm sure it'll happen that his legacy is, is in his talent. You know, it'd be sad if his, his people bring up the fact that he committed suicide, so yeah. all that. But, you know, depression is a very serious thing from what a lot of people are learning about it, yeah. you know. And I think one of the articles that I read briefly about it was that, you know, you hear the word depressed and you think, you know, I'm sad, you know, I'm worried about bills, I'm worried about that, there's pressure on that. Depression is all, like, you know, it's a whole different thing. It's yeah. not just about being sad. and It's uh, it's a physical... Uh, yeah, I guess there's a lot tied to it. You know, plus, I guess he was addicted to drugs before, got off of that, got off of alcohol. It's just a uh, very sad situation. But his yeah. legacy is... You know. I was in line at the post office in Skokie, and there was a lady in front See of me. See my picture on the wall? I saw your picture, and... Uh, Right after the show, I'm calling the police, so it'll all okay. be taken care of. And oh, they actually, they're outside waiting for me, <laughs> right? His picture will be off the wall at the post office. Um, a lady was opening a magazine, and it showed all the movies that Robin Williams has made or been in, and it's like a lot. And she, it was an older woman, probably, maybe like 80, and next to her was a, a young lady in her 20s, and she was looking at it with this lady, and she's like, my sister and I, we were just so sad. He was our favorite, and this is... So, so awful, and she's so young, and this other lady is such an age difference, and you're looking at all these, and I felt the same way, and it's like, yeah. you know, what a loss. Plus with social media now, I mean, I, I, there was things, you know, like his, I guess his daughter posted certain things, and then people were saying nasty things on social media about, you know, the situation oh, okay. and all that. So it's, you know, this whole world of technology, and the instant gratification of, of things and news that has to come out right away. And then, like I said, the social media things where people took it up to and say mean things about the poor guy dying. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. What about Lauren McCall? Yes. Just she totally got overshadowed by the whole thing. She did. It's, it reminds me of sort of like Princess Di and Mother Teresa. <laughs> Not that I'm comparing these two to those two, <laughs> but anyways. Did they die about the same time? <laughs> they did, because uh, Mother Teresa died on my 30th birthday. So, there you go. And Princess Diana died a week before, on August 30th. Right, right around the time we're taping. Yeah. Oh, gosh, can you believe it? I can't believe it. You can't believe it either. If you believe uh, it, I don't believe it. People don't believe it. I don't believe it. You're a busy guy and uh, you had time to hear about these things. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit more about your show and then... Um, well, I think... Um, yeah, I'll talk a little bit about it.